Oh, this is cool. Oh, trees. Oh, oh. power lines. <laughs> 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 So it's a new day here and today is a day of assembly here. I got my pod racer pieces cut out and Dave is gonna start working on putting all the pieces together for his tail assembly for the B17. Now while Dave is working on that, I'm excited because yesterday I spent all day cutting out all the accessories here. I'm gonna be doing the final assembly of all the different pieces before we sand it and then get ready for the paint for the pod racers. So we're looking at different ways we can mount the tail. One thing we could do is just draw the profile, but the profile is gonna have to go around a circle and then to project that, that's gonna be a little difficult. Uh, one thing we're going to possibly try to do here is to crack that piece off, put it back on the, the bed, and then run that file as a cut vector line and then have it cut because the wire is going to be perfectly through one side to the other. We can also adjust the curve value so it's a perfect friction fit. Oh, it broke. It broke before I wanted it to, though. Oh, really? <laughs> Which means it messed it up a little bit. <laughs> Darn, that was cut perfect, too. All right, so while Dave is working on the B17, I'm gonna be working on the pod racers. The first thing I need to do is glue the two halves together, and from that point, I can start putting the different accessories on that I need. Now, this is gonna kind of be a representation of Anakin's pod racer, not an exact representation. But what I did do is go through and grab some key notes of that pod racer, and that way I can put those on so when people see it, they'll know exactly what we're trying to model it after. While I'm doing that, Dave's gonna be working on the tail. It is imperative to have this straight or else the wings are gonna be tilted one side or the other. <laughs> this is why we didn't wanna have to uh, use templates or anything, because if we had a template, what would happen would be, uh, we'd have to try to project what that's gonna cut into, and it's so close to the top with that high radius, it's just hard to do. Where this, it just does it perfectly. It's like angel wings. I'm gonna put that on the pot racer. <laughs> or dove wings or something, that, that, that looks, looks awesome. Really cool. <laughs> Alright. You ready? Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's it's, excellent. Yeah, that's good. Alright. Now we can put the elevator on. <laughs> Alright, so while Dave and Josh are working on their own projects, I'm going to tell you about today's sponsor of this video, and that is our friends over at Noom. And if you've never heard of Noom before, Noom is actually a program that can help you lead a healthier, better life by changing your habits, by changing your psyche. So Noom brings in the scientific side of life where it allows for you to actually understand and learn what and why your brain does what it does. So the thing that I found most helpful about some of their curriculum pieces is actually the piece about behavior change. So the behavior chain is this. It starts with a trigger, which goes to a thought, which turns into an action, which turns into a consequence. And that is how your habits are made. So it talks about and it works through why you do what you do, how those triggers work, what your mind does through it, and how to effectively change that to live a healthier life. Now I've actually been able to use this method to change some of my habits internally, and one of those habits is actually my hydration process. So I love sweet tea, I love pop, and those things obviously dehydrate me throughout the day. So I've been really working on making sure that I hydrate throughout the day. And now it's just become habit and I feel better, I feel great, I have more energy at the end of the day, and I know that I'm living a healthier lifestyle through that process. Now something I think that sets Noom apart from other programs is this, their support is fantastic. You actually get a health coach assigned to you that you can talk back and forth with. That Noom support, that health coach is there to help you each and every single day to make sure that you accomplish the goals that you've set out to accomplish. All right, so if you're like me and you're wanting to live a healthier, better life, make sure you check out the link in the description below or go to noom.com slash flight test to where you can receive your free evaluation today. And also, it's super quick, it's super easy, it's also gonna allow you to create your custom plan when you're done. So make sure you check out the link in the description below, check out Noom, go live a healthier and better lifestyle, and now we're gonna go check and see what Josh and Dave are doing with their Consider Project. All right, so we're working on some final accessories before I start gluing everything together with the pod. So one thing I'm doing here is we're trying to repurpose and use every scrap of foam here. So anytime we have something with usable material, we put it to the side, hence this huge pile of foam over here. But then what I can do is I can design different accessories, whether it's pistons, whether it's push rods, or in this case, we can bend this to make it look like a cable. 
or all these different detail rings here that are going to go on to give that pod racer its shape and make it look a lot more like Anakin's pod racer. My next step is I'm going to finish cutting this out. I'm going to be taking this back and we're going to finally start to glue all these different accessories on giving that pod racer its final shape. Hey Dave. Hey Noah, what's going on buddy? Not much. I heard you working on the turrets. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm just getting started on them. Basically I'm just uh, starting out with uh, making the gears and going to work off of that. Uh, it's a lot of 3D printing. They're really big, a lot bigger than I expected them to be. Um, 200 millimeters round, it's about that big around. After I get done with the gears, I'm going to take our 9 gram servos, turn them into continuous drive, and add FPV camera, um, laser tag, and hopefully it'll be done. Awesome. Yeah. It's winning. So Lee was laughing at me, by the way, a second ago. Yes, he Did you hear him laughing at me? Yes, he, he laughs at me. No, I was not That's laughing. I, made up the camera. I was <laughs> not laughing at you. I was laughing because you were using this thing here, which hit, the turntable. The turntable. Nobody which, uses. Well, if if Robert, when he sees this, he's going to uh, probably murder you. Should we plug it in and have it turn? <laughs> oh yes. I'm okay. gonna get a bracket. I'm gonna hold this. I'm gonna turn it hot, and I'm gonna go. <laughs> You see it? Right, yes, I'm gonna, I do. I'm gonna get the rest of the this is this is how we do things here at Flight Test. <laughs> this, if you guys haven't tuned in in the past couple episodes, this is our hot wire bow. Um, we use a lot with CNC machines. You don't need to use CNC machines. You can simply do a template and then get something like this a bow. You can make it, or this is from Hot Wire Foam Factory, um, and basically you just drag the hot wire through and it works really good. So we just use the CNC machine because number one, it's awesome, and then it also takes a huge job and makes it very quick, which is what we need. All right, turn it on. Working. It's working. The, hot, the wire is probably not gonna last very long because I have it like cooking, but. Can, can you, uh, here, where's the controller? Can you make it go backwards? Don't, no, no. But can't you make <laughs> it go wicked, wicked, wicked? You can. All right, so I'm gonna do this on both the uh, intake tubes. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna get my little uh, etching tool. I'm gonna draw what I wanna see on the main pods and then I'm gonna start cutting that out here because there's gonna be portions where I want the uh, glow of the inside to kind of go outside through exhaust ports and through that main intake on the bottom and uh, I'll cut that out now so that way I can start carving it and conditioning it so when I sand it it's all finished. Well I hope this works. Look. That is a major thrust angle though from the looks of it. It is but that's that's the same as the other stuff we'll find out real quick. See if we can run more nose heavy. So the flurkin was awesome when it was big we had to make it small, and we have tons of these awesome gremlin motors. Um, there's a plane that we loved called, uh, oh my gosh, it's skipping my mind now, a Nano Goblin, a Nano Goblin. <laughs> and they don't make it right now, we loved it. So we thought this would be the perfect time to try to make a Nano Goblin size flurkin. And this is only one sheet of foam, 120 by 30 inch sheet of foam. So um, I'm really excited. We're gonna try it out with the Goblin motor. And uh, check this. I'm used to huge monstrous motors, but this is just two cell. They can go to, uh, I think with this prop, it can go all the way to four cell. All right, so for the Nano Flurk in here, we're gonna be trying to fly it off of an 800 milliamp two cell battery. And also, we're gonna be upgrading our battery chargers here, and we're gonna be doing a review specifically on this one. This is a Hobbymate uh, smart charger. It has two outputs here. We've been using the same battery charger forever. The technology has grown leaps and bounds. Now, if you guys are new to the hobby and you're kind of wondering of ins and outs of charging, oftentimes people put all their attention towards batteries, not their chargers here. Oftentimes, if you charge it properly and treat your batteries right, they're gonna last a very long time for you. A good rule of thumb is to charge your batteries at 1C. This is gonna give you the longest life of your batteries. Although newer batteries are capable of doing two or even three C charge rates, the only downside on that is oftentimes you'll open yourself up to a little bit extra risk of hurting your battery or God forbid having a catch on fire. All right, so if you guys are new to the hobby here and you wanna make sure your batteries last as long as possible, but also you wanna charge as safely as possible, we recommend charging your batteries at what we call 1C. If you look here, we have 800 milliamps and 3200 milliamps. You simply take the decimal point, which on 800 is gonna be at the end, and you move it three spots to your left, that's 0.8 amps, that's 1C. Same thing here with this 3200 milliamps. If you charge or move it three points to the left, that's 3.2 amps. So to charge this at 1C for this, 3.2 amps, charge it at 1C for this 800 milliamp battery, it's gonna be 0.8 amps. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. We're gonna be putting this through its paces. It's a newer technology that I'm used to. Now Wes is gonna be doing a complete walkthrough here and an overview on this charger on our tech channel. So make sure you check this out. This thing size-wise is absolutely unbelievable compared to what we used to use. And on top of that, it has a built-in charger in it. Now that we got these batteries charging, I got one already charged, let's go fly. All right, so we're just gonna try to, to maiden it here. You want me to throw it for you? Yeah, you don't mind? It's pretty intense. I, I think it's gonna be like, I hope it has the power to fly, we'll find out. I think it will. All right. Ready? Good. Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> I cannot wow. believe it worked that well that quickly. Oh, that's pretty quick. Whoa! I'm oh, oh, oh. oh, trying to tell which side is up and down. Is <laughs> nose heavy? Just a touch more nose weight. But that's hands off. And you definitely dial the throws down. Oh, this is cool. Whoa, trees! Oh, oh, oh power <laughs> lines! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm flying the big one. <laughs> that's a quite half vertical. That's not too bad. All right, let's see how she goes slow. Yeah, they're full up. It's just like they're the big one. Up. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we're good. <laughs> the big one was the exact same way. Just went awesome. down. I love it. All right, back to the drawing board. All right, so we're ready to start putting on some of our foam board details. This is a lot easier than actually carving it out of foam board, but also this can be spray painted, which gives us the ability to have different textures, different colors, do it really fast. And also I gotta start making some of the cutouts where we're gonna be doing our exhaust ports. It's gonna allow the lights from the center of the pod shine to the outside. So this, this is gonna be the angle that you're gonna see for these hanging up here. So everything above there, there'll be some details, but not a whole lot of it because frankly it's up against the ceiling. Um, this area here has a one-way mirror. As the tiny whoops fly through it, you're gonna be able to see them passing through. Now we don't want people to be able to just see like a clear window. We wanna make it detailed. Uh, on the pod racer itself, there's a lot of louvers, like exhaust louvers. So I'm gonna have the exhaust louvers kind of shaping through here, but I gotta cut out this area. This is where our, uh, our little door is. And then this is gonna be another exhaust louver back here. I'm gonna trace these out. I'm gonna take my hot wire cutter. I'm gonna cut them out. And then I can start putting these details in and uh, finishing it off. Uh, I do have the templates here. This is the hot wire templates. And they're gonna go right here. And then we're gonna take this aluminum metal tape and then trace each end and then we can drag the hot wire over it. And uh, it's just like a wood template, but it's smoother and it's also uh, cheaper. Mm -hmm. And this is a technique, if you guys like this, this is a technique you guys will be able to do on any of your models. So you can cut out a foam template, line it with it, and as long as you don't push too hard against the template, it should work out really good. One of, the, one of the things that I want to point out here is we're using this aluminum tape so that the wire will slide really easy on here. The important thing is you can't have like the aluminum tape from this side touching this side. If you do, it'll make continuity between there and there rather than through the wire because it's thicker. So it'll make this not heat up anymore. Yeah, it'll <laughs> bypass the part of the wire that you need to be hot. All right. All right. So then we just do some sanding and shaping and we're all set on this. Let's do the other tip. So that, what are you up to? So we're trying to figure out, we have a three dimensional cut that's going over this whole entire thing. Uh, we got to taper the windshield back and at the same time, this is going to get cut down. And right at this point is where it rolls into the fuselage. All right, so I think I got all the templates. I got the tail, the rudder, the fuselage. All I got to do is show this to David. We're going to just double check everything because we can't really add on once we cut it off. And we're going to start cutting. Well, at the end of the day, that looks remarkably good. Yeah, I mean, considering, all yeah. things considered. A lot of sanding here, but I mean, we can take the, well, the straight wire. We can even kind of cut it a little bit. All right, so next step is, uh, I say we finish this off, learn what we need before we do this, and then we're gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of the rudder and uh, get that glued together. Well, we made a really big duck call. We did. <laughs> Yeah, I love how strong that's gonna be. Yeah, not going anywhere. Typically, rudders are our most weak element on an airplane because just sticking out the top, and especially with foam board, it can kind of wobble back and forth. You can brace a lot of different ways. With this, it's not going anywhere, especially since it'll be fiberglass in.
There's your door. You know what, in reality though, I bet you you could make a, you could probably just shave that door. You know what I could also do? I could take the, uh, the hot knife, cut a groove in there, and just stick the ruler on one side, the ruler on the other side. Oh, yeah. Let's try that. But that just looks, sounds like it'd look really cool. You want <laughs> to do the honors? Uh, sure, but if I mess up, I'm sorry. My turn. You ready? No, that's not going to bypass anything, right? Nope. All right. Whoop. Oh. Oops. Oh, that was the outside, too. Just don't burn my finger, please. <laughs> All right, that was cool. Yeah, that's awesome. It looks strong. It, it is. I mean, for how light it is. Yeah. In the past, we've made spars out of wood uh, that were very strong, but also incredibly heavy, and not sometimes as strong as we need. This is nothing but the tube that is cut out of our tail. Um, we repeated that, and then Dave wrapped it in fiberglass, and it is. I mean, you're talking four ounces, maybe. Yeah, if that. If that. It's some pretty good strength. Um, considering, like, I'm putting probably a good three, four pounds of pressure on that. I do that to the on fiberglass piece. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's just kind of. This, a, this can't even hold it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, let's shove let's it in the front. Let's get a tail. Let's That puts so much more in perspective. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So what's your plan today, uh, sanding? Um, we've got a bunch of sanding to do and I'm kind of working on the turret here and there. Yeah. Just try to get that wrapped up hopefully. Perfect. I'm gonna finish the details I need on this and then I'm gonna go and meet you down with the sanding and, uh, and hit that with you as well too so I can get these pods sanded and ready for paint by the end of the day. So basically what we need to do now is I'm not happy at all with the long, I don't know what they're called, the little fingers in front of Anakin's uh, pod racer here. I'm not happy with this. I didn't draw them very well. I want to cut new ones. We got two huge blocks of foam at Pilot Institute. We need to get them up to manufacturing. Problem is, is we have about a foot and a half of snow. We're not going to be able to get any of our vehicles to uh, get up there. So we're going to try strapping them to the top of my Jeep to see if we can kind of plow it up there. <laughs> so normally we just put them back of the trailer and pull it up to the manufacturing the snow's so deep we everything's buried except for this at least cheap So we got our big block of foam up here. We're gonna be cutting up the final pieces of our pod racers, and that's gonna be those fingers that kind of stick forward. Got that all drawn up, we're gonna cut it out, we're gonna finish it off. So this is a piece that we cut up of manufacturing here, and basically this is what we're gonna ultimately be making. Now there's gonna be some additional sanding, but all we had to do to get this basic shape here was using some templates. And if you wanna check out our tech channel, we showed you exactly how we do that so you guys can get a bow and do similar things to what we're doing here. Along with that, I also drew up this wooden plywood piece to go inside this channel. And what that's for is so when this is hanging out in front of the pod racer, it doesn't start sagging over time. Uh, that was one thing that kind of concerned me because we don't want to see those fins over time just kind of curling down. So I like this general shape. I'm going to make three more of these here and then that's going to wrap this up. I'm also going to need to fit this wooden piece inside the pod and glue it in nice and solid. All right, friends. First pod racer is all done. What an awesome experience here. We have one more to do, but with the help of a little studio magic, that's gonna go quick. All right, friends, we are all wrapped up. The pods came out amazing. Along with that, Dave made great progress. He has the tail surfaces on, the fuselage sanded out. The B-17 fuselage and tail is pretty much done. He even had enough time to start working on the turrets. And make sure you hit that subscribe bell and tune in next week because we are not done with these pod racers. We're gonna be putting paint on them, LED lights, and getting them hung up so we can finally fly through them. Along with that, we're gonna start our design work on the B-17, move that even closer to completion. Thanks for being part of the Flight Test family, and we'll see you next time.